$154. A 3D printer for $154. How good can it be? Huh? We'll find out. I bought this one and I'm going to put it together and test it out on today's Filament Friday. For a dollar a month, you can become a Patreon supporter and learn what's going on behind the scenes. Thank you to my existing Patreon supporters. You make Filament Friday happen. Now, at $154, I did do a little shopping around. I want to make sure I get a printer that's what I want. And there's some features that I liked about this $154 printer. Now, what is it? It is a CTC Prusa i3 style printer. I liked it because it had like a full frame, similar to the way the Prusa MK2 has a full square frame making up the machine. So it's supposed to have the bed assembly already done, the carriage already done, and a lot of the wiring already has connectors on it. So that was some of the reasoning behind picking this particular machine. Now CTC, I didn't even know they made an i3. So let me show you what's inside this box and see if what I ordered is what I got. So right up top is the frame, and this is what I meant by I wanted a full frame. But this one is actually wood, just like the other CTC printer. And it's a laminated like plywood that's been laser cut and then painted black. And these pieces look slightly warped. Yeah, there's slight warp to this wood. It's got two uprights. It's got two pieces. This is supposed to be for a spool holder. Some smaller pieces, probably for holding the mounts or rods or something. Beneath this, almost a full spool of PLA filament. Two Z-axis motors. And they're already mounted to their wood mounts. And it's even got the stop switch for the z-axis already wired up and it's got a connector it's got an mk8 style hot end and it's already on an aluminum bracket so i don't have to assemble that all the wiring have connectors on the end it comes with an lcd an sd card and a full size sd card and it's already mounted to a wooden frame now one of the features i really liked about this is that it comes with an on off switch that's fused and a full three prong plug and the ends are already crimped to Connectors. There's a few loose parts, screws, and odds and ends. There's not a lot of loose pieces here. And then the power supply 12 volt, 15 amp. Then below that, the X carriage already assembled. It's got the stop switch installed, the motor installed, the bearings installed. These are 3D printed pieces. So this saves me a lot of time. Glass bed included. Some kits don't include that. Here's the bed, threaded rods between them, and then 8 millimeter rods to hold it with tie strap bearings, and then the belt all connected to the motor. It's got a plastic gear on the motor, which I'm not crazy about that, but a connector in place for the heated bed and a connector for the temperature sensor. Here's all the motor connections, all pre-wired with connectors. Here's the board. This is a custom board, plug-in modules, and I plugged in fuses. Got heat sinks on the FETs. Looks pretty good, but it's basically a standard uh, Arduino with ramps, it looks like. For $154. This looks like a pretty good set of parts. I know there's an SD card in here somewhere, so I'll dig out the SD card, and on the SD card is supposed to be the instructions. So I got the manual brought up on my laptop, and it's actually like 52 pages. There's a Chinese variant version, and there's a Chinglish version. And that's the one I'm going to use, the English Chinglish version. One thing I like is the screws all have numbers on them. So this is number six number seven, number three, and it refers to them just by the number in the instructions. So I don't have to measure anything as long as I pull it from the right bag. That's nice. I'll just real quickly go through each step and show you how this thing goes together. Frame screwed together with some bolts and nuts. There were standoffs to hold the circuit board and a fan to blow across the circuit board, which is actually kind of nice. And then the power supply, just three screws held that in place. And then there was the on off switch with a fuse. Now I'd like this, they did this well couple screws to hold that in place and then the wires routed up and this was now this was strange that the wires routed back out so these are line wires I don't like this these should have been protected more some kind of sheathing and they really stretch to get up here but I was able to get them to reach and there was the power connecting the base to this frame required just two little brackets that were already on the assembly and then two bolts in each side and then there was a t-nut and bolt at the back to connect to the angled pieces. So this was easy to assemble and it held pretty good. It was pretty solid. Now you can't tighten these things too much because you'll crack the wood. And the motor mounts were difficult to get to the screws. That was kind of tough. 
The LCD was easy to install, just a couple of screws. And then the threaded rods just pushed onto the stepper motors with these tubing, this flexible tubing. That's kind of crude, but what do you expect for 154 bucks? And then the guide rods pushed into the base, and then I had to tap it with a hammer to go into the top section. So those were held pretty tight, which was a good sign. And then that bracket was screwed in place with a bolt and nut. Now the extruder came fully assembled, but I had to disassemble it in order to mount it to the X carriage. And I will end up taking this motor off multiple times, as you'll see. And this extruder didn't have a spring arm. I was already questioning this thing, but I put it together and I figured I'd give it a try. So I wired everything up. It came with this plastic sheathing to go around the wiring. And I got that in place. But the diagram for the circuitry was really bad. I found out it's a GTEC 2560 or GT2560 board. It's actually a pretty nice board when you go through the specs. And on their wiki page, they have a great drawing for wiring this thing up. So I just followed these directions, and then this thing was put together. The wiring wasn't all bundled up nicely, but it was put together, ready to try it out. And I was anxious. Now, this only took about two hours to put this thing together. But then I noticed the <laughs> carriage wouldn't move properly. So I decided to take the threaded rods back out and it was rough on one side. So I had to heat up that flexible tubing to get the rods out. And then I put it in my drill and I ran it up and down and I had to hold it with a pliers because it was so rough. So I ran this up and down and then I used a little lubricant and once I got this up and down several times, I could just hold it with my hand. So I broke all the, the crap off, and it was working really well. So it was going up and down very smoothly, except for one spot. You'll see it here. It stops on the right. It was hitting a bolt, a bolt in the frame. So it really wasn't doing a whole lot for structure, so I just decided to just take it out. At this point, I'm anxious to try this out, and everything seemed to be working, so I loaded up some filament. I loaded a G-code file of a chest pawn, and right away I could hear this thing clicking. It wasn't flowing good. It wasn't making good contact on the bed. I took it apart, and I could see that pushing the filament here, I can bypass the whole gear. It just slips right by it, so clearly this stuff was slipping. And then I checked the screws, and sure enough, they were loose. Now, this came assembled. I didn't install this, so I tightened up the bolts, and they were really loose. Once they were tightened up, it seemed better. When I pushed on the filament, the gear moved. I didn't feel as much slipping, although was, there was a little bit of slipping, but it wasn't nearly as bad. So I decided to just mount this thing again and try it, and it was marginally better. So I tried some Matter Hackers Gunmetal Gray PLA filament, and this stuff grabbed better, and it actually 3D printed, but it looks like it's printing a mummy version of this chest pawn. It is absolutely putrid. So there's still something wrong with this. The, I was still hearing clicking, so there was slipping. And when I tore this thing apart again, it just was clear to me it needs some kind of pressure on it. This design sucks. I decided to change the gear, and I was thinking maybe change the motor. Maybe there's something wrong with the motor. So here's the original motor spinning on the gear, and here's the motor I tried with a new gear, but look at it, it's jumping back and forth. So even the wiring was different. So I rewired it to work with a new motor and a new gear, and I got the same results. So that wasn't the problem. I shared this with my Patreon supporters, and Ray Pope, one of my Patreon supporters, suggested I print this. So I quickly did, at a very, very rough setting, put this thing together, and I was already loving this. This was looking better already. I put it together, and look at this. It's extruding plastic. So I put it to work printing. Here it is in time lapse. This is not a perfect print. I didn't calibrate the flow or anything like that. But man, what a difference. Just a 3D printed part made that big a difference. And I sliced this and cure at a 0.2 layer height, and there's no cooling fan for the filament, so I know this could be made a lot better. So at $154, is it worth it? Well, first of all, it's here. I mean, if this was a $154 Kickstarter 3D printer, I may still be waiting for it. But this is here. I put it together. It was easy to put together. Only two hours. The parsley assembled pieces helped a lot. And these 3D printed parts are actually on the SD card, so I can print replacements if they ever break. So overall, it's a pretty complete set of parts. Now, if you're brand new to 3D printing, that extruder problem is a major headache. So I can't recommend it for someone that's just starting out. But if you're experienced with 3D printing, or you want parts to build your own, or you just want a second machine to fool with, 
I think it's pretty good for 154 bucks. But really, it comes down to how well it prints. And once I fix that, it seemed to print pretty good. And I know I can make it better. So it has potential. I'll put a link to the eBay listing. And in fact, the eBay seller is going to send me a new extruder. They told me they would. So I'll put the, the link in the description below. But I really would love to hear your comments. And I know there's other ones out there like the ANET A8 and the Tron XY or Tronxy. They're in the same ballpark. You have to do little things to get them to print good, but they have potential. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. So I hope you learned something from this. I know I did. If you like this and you want to check out some of my other videos, just click on them over here. And if you want to help support the channel and so I can buy things like this, because I bought this, they didn't give it to me. Support me on Patreon. A dollar a month's all I ask. And please subscribe. Click on my logo over here and subscribe. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time. I'm filming a Friday.